Okay, uh, today we are sitting with uh, Toby Rhodes here in Basel. Please, can you introduce you a little bit? Well, I'm a fourth generation American. My uh, one grandfather was American, one German, one grandmother was English and the other Hungarian. And I live here in Basel since 1956. Okay, so you are a communication expert. Um, what was the start of your communication well, you, career? You can, you can say communication expert. An expert is somebody who knows a lot about it. And uh, that I do. But um, I'm trying very hard uh, to make communication uh, work. Okay, what were your highlights in your communication work? My highlights in communication work were about four and a half years as Marshall Plan Informations Information. I sometimes, you know, sometimes I speak another language without knowing it. Um, being Marshall Plan Information Chief uh, at the U.S. Embassy uh, in Bonn Gothenburg and uh, a short time. Uh, press officer for the American commander in Berlin. Um, that's where it, it started. Okay, you are talking now about the Second World War. Uh, what were your personal experiences? In Second World War, I, I worked in 1939. I worked in an American export house. Uh, which was the only American export house that had its own offices at that time in Cairo and in Tel Aviv. And uh, we exported almost anything and everything from steel to wood to food to clothing to everything. And um, in Washington the Navy knew that, found out about that and uh, called me one day uh, whether I wouldn't uh, come to Washington uh, become a Navy uh, captain and uh, take over uh, the, uh, as captain of, of the Alexandria port, the American part for Alexandria port. And I said, well, why not? We're, we're, this is our war, one or the other. And uh, sent, I sent my papers in and they called back excited and said, my God, you're not, you're not an American because of the changes that were in, in nationalities, my father's American citizenship, uh, that's another story, but at any rate, at that time I was a Colombian citizen. Okay. And so then I said, okay, now, um, then I, I just stay until you draft me. And when I was drafted, I then went uh, through offices, artillery of, uh, uh, training school and um, uh, officer school, and became then an adjutant uh, to the commanding artillery commander of the 104th Division. And eventually said, uh, I said, they are going to the Asia and I better go to Europe. Uh, so then I uh, notified a military intelligence service that uh, I was available. And then they, they call, uh, called me to Washington, to Baltimore, out of uh, Camp Ritchie, and uh, there I passed, uh, since I knew the languages, the main thing that Camp was doing was to make Americans learn languages that they could use to interrogate prisoners. And, uh, well, I knew German, I knew French, I knew English, I knew Italian, so I, I knew some Spanish too, so it was perfectly okay. And so then I had very little to do. One day I was passed uh, the exam in all those languages and I have a document that says that I'm an interpreter in all those languages. And then I was assigned to the headquarters detachment of the 12th Army Group uh, uh, Psychological Warfare Detachment and uh, we went to New York to go on board a ship and I was called uh, by the commanding harbor officer and uh, I was the youngest one. 
We were four officers. I was the youngest one. And they called me and they said, here, you are now commander of 360 um, uh, uh, birds. Um, Pigeons. Is it? See, sometimes the words are missing. The pigeons. Tauben. Pigeon. Pigeons. <laughs> I was suddenly a commander of 360 pigeons and two sergeants. <laughs> uh, those pigeons were Air Force pigeons and were used over Europe by the American Air Force <laughs> because they could not radio positions or inf information. So they always had some pigeons in the, in the cockpit and then they, they wrote a little message and put it in the lake and then let the pigeon out and the pigeon flew home in, to, in England to its, its loft. And I was the first commander of 360 pigeons. That was my first action. Okay. I delivered Your them first in leadership Liverpool. experience. <laughs> I delivered them in Liverpool. Uh, two had escaped. And probably we hoped that they were mid-Atlantic uh, to escape in a storm. And we hoped that they might make it home. But we, we don't know. We don't know whether they ever got home in America or whether they drowned. Okay. So, and then uh, at a certain time you came to Switzerland. Well, I had been in Switzerland because when uh, the, my father uh, left Philip Holtzmann as chief of Philip Holtzmann because of his uh, Jewish uh, part being part Jewish and uh, taught the German uh, Autobahn um, minister of Hitler uh, said Philipp Holzmann cannot get any government business as long as this non-Aryan runs the show. And so my father transferred himself via the Sofitech, that was a subsidiary of Philipp Holzmann here in Basel, uh, to Colombia, where they were building the railroad uh, to Bogota from the, from the sea. And um, there, in 19, that, that would, he left in 1932, and um, or 1933, I don't remember. And um, there he met uh, Fernando Lopez, who was then president of Colombia, later the uh, president of the United Nations. And they became kind of, well, well, well acquainted friends, maybe too much. Uh, and my father kept uh, uh, hollering about the German ambassador uh, who was a typical Nazi and uh, one of, of those uh, guys with uh, cuts all over the face and so on and so forth. And um, so one day Lopez said to my father, uh, well Don Carlos, um, Colombia would be uh, pleased and honored uh, if you be uh, became a Colombian citizen. You're doing so much for the country, you're building this railroad, which is absolutely necessary. And my father said, well, I don't buy uh, nationalities. Uh, I was born an American and I'm going home to America uh, after I'm 48 because then I'm in retirement. And uh, so <clears throat> Lopez said, no, 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 that's not the idea. The idea is that uh, the Senate of Colombia would make you and your family uh, Colombian citizens, um, free of charge. Okay. And that's how I became then a Colombian. In 1937, I immigrated into America as a Colombian. Okay, but how came you to Switzerland? I came to Switzerland, well, for the first time, I came to Switzerland in 1935 because uh, one could no longer uh, learn uh, properly uh, in Germany. Uh, I was at the Lessing Gymnasium 
in Frankfurt, uh, and um, we had uh, some teachers who were okay, and some teachers were pure Nazis, and uh, uh, tried to make us, uh, to tell us such stupid things and the wrong, obviously wrong things, which I could prove that I decided, that my, my parents decided that in Germany, uh, except in the American school in Berlin, one could not uh, let children grow up. And so um, they found uh, a college uh, in Switzerland, in Territe, called Fischer. Uh, an Indian woman uh, ran this, owned and ran this college. Uh, her son, Jimmy Fischer, was a tennis champion uh, and uh, we learned tennis from him and so forth. And uh, that's where they sent me to do my, my, uh, my, my bacho. Okay, so this was your first contact I, I left, with Switzerland. I left, I left in, in, in Obersekunda and uh, made my abitur, my English